Hey. <laughs> they didn't hear the part before that, but you know what? Cowboy Bebop's cool. Hello, this is Neon Pocket Dimension. I'm Jacob. I also have Gage. Hey, how's it going? There he is. We're chilling. We're talking. We're just chit chatting about the show today. We're gonna chit chat. We'll we'll talk a little, little about a bit about whatever we want to talk about. But we're here in the chair for an hour. We've done twenty episodes. Um. Yeah, Miguel couldn't make it tonight, so we decided why don't we just hang out? You know what I'm saying? So Hell yeah. If you get well watch- soon, Miguel. Sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Feel better, buddy. We'll see you next week. Um, but I, I will get out of the way that uh, this Friday, uh, I'm trying to put together an Odd Valley gaming stream. A whole bunch of people, you know, we all get on Discord and we just play some games and get drunk. So that'll be this Friday, seven or seven thirty. Around the same time we started tonight uh, is when we'll start on Friday. But uh, definitely drink along, you know, uh, and be there. Twitch.tv slash Odd Valley. Uh, with that out of the way, what's up, Gage? How we doing? Um, I, I did want to ask. I was ha- hanging out right here, my wife, and I just wanted to ask. You want to be part of that game stream on Friday? You want to play, cool. some, play some? We're going to play Evil? Is that what it's called? Evil? Yeah, e- Evil. That's the game I was Evil. thinking. Evil. It's between it's, it's four. It's kind of like Werewolf, but digital. It's like also like Among Us, kind of. Oh, kind of Among Us-y. She yeah. says maybe. It's a strong maybe from her. <laughs> well, so like Evil kind of plays like, um, kind of plays like an MMO, like MMORPG a little bit. Because like you'll get quests oh. and stuff. Like basically it's like Werewolf, right? Where there's some killers and then there's some normal people. And like people have to... Um, like they'll be assigned a role or something, so they'll have to do stuff. You know what I mean? Based on those roles, and you can pick up like quests and items and stuff. So like, it's like it sounds like just the gameplay besides the killing part is kind of interesting. You know what I mean? Uh, but like it, Ooh. when Ooh. someone dies at that point, it's just like werewolf. Like you, you know, if someone discovers a body, everybody gets summoned to the town square, and they got to talk and figure out, try to figure out who like killed the person or whatever. Dig it. Yeah, so well, I'm like in. Fun. It sounds sounds like a good time. I downloaded it already. Just have it already rock. So yeah, and it, I I just saw like I was thinking of putting a big uh, group together, and it's between four and twelve players. So I said, this is probably the game. And we'll just shout at each other and get drunk. So cool. Good times. Oh, yeah. I'm into it. Um. <laughs> um well, well, yeah, for sure. Was there a question before that? I forget. Sorry. Uh, no. I was just saying, what's up? How you doing? Oh, you know, just chilling like midweek, midweek Wednesday vibes, trying to get through it. We had a, you know, we officially ended October, but it was a good one. I thought, like, mm-hmm. I think probably, probably more spooky stuff consumed this year than I have in a while, which is oh, cool. Nice. Between between games and movies that we watched, and like actual Halloween um, festivities that we partook in. Yeah, it, it was pretty. It was an all around like all around spooktastic month so that was cool and then even i'd say like having this podcast be part of it i kind of like added to it you know what i mean because oh yeah there's even more even more of a reason to like embrace the spooky so yeah i mean especially if you interact with me and my friends like we're gonna be like dude you gotta watch fucking you gotta watch it follows dude if you haven't seen it follows man (laughs) the fuck are you even doing oh man have you seen texas chainsaw massacre 2 because goddamn, that is a good ass movie. If you haven't, by the way, that's actually real, and I, it's already. I actually happening. still haven't seen the second one. <laughs> oh, dude, please do yourself a favor and watch it. Because you know, first one's from the seventies. I don't know if it was like late seventies, yeah. mid seventies. The second one is like deep eighties, dude, and it's a whole different vibe. And um, I totally, I totally recommend it. But that's what I'm saying, man. You know, nice. we're here to encourage each other to be more ner- more nerdy. You know what I mean? And uh, I love horror. You know, it's like Mochi Squeeze. She doesn't watch scary shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, nowadays she kind of thinks about it more because she's like, "Ooh, I heard about this spooky," because that's what she, we she, we call the horror movies, spookies. Uh, sure. She's like, "Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a new spooky out. I think I want to rent it." You know, and she'll do that. But before she wasn't really into it until like every October. I'm like, every fucking night we're watching something kind of spooky, even if it's just Beetlejuice, bro. You know what I mean? It's a little, uh, it's a little <laughs> bit contagious for sure. Like once you start, you kind of want to like check more boxes. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, you're like, oh, what's the next like big scary movie to come out? Um, 
One that I didn't mention because we watched it after the after the dark cast, but I watched a Barbarian. Did you see that? Oh my god, so did we. Yeah, dude, that was, that was quite quite the film. I'm glad that you brought that up because I wanted to talk about that a little bit tonight because it's such a damn good movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was fucked up and disturbing and weird, but yeah, um, yeah I don't want to spoil it. Like, I thought it. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I'll say that. Oh, man, even saying what I have to say is a spoiler. So I'll just say it's not what you think it is, okay? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's you a, think it's there's something a weird... and there's a twist that's happening. But when shit, yeah, when shit a... hits the fan, dude, it's creative. And I like the creativity there. Me too. Um, there's a weird, like, you'll know what happens. This isn't a spoiler, but there's a weird, like, abrupt mood change like halfway through Mm -hmm. the movie and you're like whoa what the hell (laughs) and it really like takes you out of it for a second but then you're like oh and then it just gets crazy Um, yeah yeah but you know like even in the trailers it shows like that little room uh Mm -hmm. you know the like the stairway down there and like that whole section section is just like the claustrophobia and the darkness and that whole thing oh my god pretty creepy dude it's so amazing like the buildup of that movie is great, and then it fully delivers. What I didn't know, which Mochi Squeeze, she looked it up. She she said that it was written by one of the dudes from The Widest Kids You Know, which is great. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. Uh, and that's why it's also kind of funny. By the way, Justin Long, excellent in this film. Everyone is, but Justin Long, like, man, he, he did a great job being that character, and I'll just leave it at that. He did. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Oh, man, what a great yeah, fucking it's movie. Funny. Yeah, I guess uh, if it's one of the whitest kids you know, guys, it's, it's just another example of um, com- comedians having uh, a, a, an act for a knack for horror, you know, like something about the timing of it, you know, dude, you're absolutely right. I think it's also like just the eccentricities, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, of comedy, like you're right. Timing is a huge part in, in like you already understand the concept of timing if you're a comedian or especially a, as a comedy writer. And like, dude, most funny people are pretty like into horror stuff, you know. Like, I feel like, you know, I don't know, yeah, man. Yeah, or I, at least at least I just shit, like it. You know what I mean? I just feel like they have a they they have a good shot at making something. Cause like for me, like my favorite horror films are comedy horror films. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, e- Evil Dead Two is one of my f- top five movies of all time. You know, and that's a comedy movie. It's horror, but. You know, even even when I wasn't really into horror in the '90s, and I watched Idle Hands, I consider that a comedy horror. Um, totally. And it's great. It's fucking. I fucking love that movie. Also, the classic uh, American Werewolf in, in London. You know, so I'm just a big ha- yeah. fan of horror, and like I try to spe- uh, spread that horror cheer all October long, which we did. <laughs> but now that it's over, you know, it's pretty nice. Like I immediately started. Like I tried again to find Zeta Gundam online to watch legit (laughs) you know what i mean and it's like impossible to find unless i pay for funimation and funimation Mm. i had a subscription to and they sent me an email saying crunchyroll bought us out our content's all coming to crunchyroll get a crunchyroll account so i cancel my crunchyroll it's not there it's not fucking there zeta gundam is only available on funimation to this day and i switched over like eight months ago i feel like forever ago and so Crazy. I might I might be resorting to um, other means to watch Zeta Gundam, but I started watching it today, and I was like, "Yes, this is nice. It's nice switch of pace." You know what I mean? To I think uh, I think you, <laughs> via your subscriptions and your time and your uh, influence online, shouting out Gundam, I think you've given the franchise plenty of dedica- <laughs> of. Uh, Fiscal, fiscal, and word of mouth dedication, you know. Yeah, and and as I watch Zeta Gundam I'm on on episode eight, I think maybe nine, I uh, I'm like, man, now I I get why I did need to watch this because it's it's a good follow up series to the original one because it is like chronologically, like in real life, you know what I mean? It's the second series that they animated. Um, and it really feels like a sequel to the first uh, season. But I did watch oh. other series after, you know, Mobile Suit Gundam. Um, but yeah, I'm loving Zeta Gundam so far. Hell yeah! It's yeah, no, it's it's true. You, like you check off you check off the uh, the Spookies list, and then you're kind of like, all right, what's now? I can move on from that, and then it starts to get <laughs> like wholesome season with holiday stuff. If you're into <laughs> that, you know, whatever. I'm pretty um, I'm pretty anti the holidays for the most part until like 
either at the earliest like two weeks before christmas then i'm like all right you. you know what i mean i'm down uh but like when it you know when december rolls in we do wa- like watch our movies you know what i mean like jingle all the way yeah. always gotta get that in there every year there uh, joy has to have the party where we watch um what's it called uh christmas vacation which is like one of her favorite movies ever and then uh, uh i make this awesome uh eggnog my mom gave me a recipe for and then uh we have the moose glasses so we drink the eggnog out of there Uh oh i lost jacob for a second oh no i lost He's you gone. moose glasses can you He's hear gone. moose glasses i think it's probably me can, can you hear moose glasses? My connections all right i'm talking and i'm saying moose glasses help Moose glasses. <laughs> hey, what? Uh, by the way, I, I just, I'll just shout out Bon Diesel in chat. What's going on? Thanks for chilling. Said I'm playing Call of Duty and chilling. I'll be lurking. You know, uh, if you do want to well, watch well. these episodes live. Oh shit! Now we're in a another dimension. If you want to watch this show live, uh, we record Wednesdays, uh, seven o'clock p.m. Pacific time, every Wednesday. Uh, normally it's a you know regular episode. This is a little bit different, um, but yeah, you can hang out in the chat. We'll you know we'll read some comments if they're funny or fun or whatever and all that fun shit. But I'm sure we'll get Gage back eventually. He said, "Lol, Discord crashed. Coming right back." Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, to celebrate 20 episodes of Neon Pocket Dimension, which is kind of what we're doing tonight, he says now it's updating. Okay, well he'll be back. Uh, I am drinking another one of these, um, Mythos Bezel Marzen. What's a Marzen, you ask? Uh, a Marzen beer is actually an Oktoberfest beer. It's the that that's the type of brewing that you get there. Uh, a Marzen, I believe it's German or Bavarian, I should say. Um, and it's I forget what makes a Marzen a Marzen, but it is more like amber, than like a lager is typically. Uh, they're a little more sweeter, full-bodied, delicious. I love them. Love Oktoberfest nice. beer. Uh, and you're back. Yeah, me too. I'm back. So I was drinking one of those, and I think it's the last one in my pack. I also got a couple fat tires here, so you know I'm ready to party. Oh, uh, I, I like a fat tire. I'm a good I'm a good fat tire fan for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of realizing that like fat tire might be my just default beer besides Pizza Ports Amber. Pizza Ports Amber nice. is really fucking good. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, I don't know. That must maybe that's more local syndication than than. Uh, well, it's from like San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. San <laughs> Diego. <laughs> from San Diego, I think. Uh, it's from nice. California, so you know what I'm saying. There you go. I am um, I am on the direct opposite end of California, San Diego. So you never I know. I know. But, I know. Yeah. They. I yeah. mean, it's the same state. Just ship it up there. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Right. My my friend just moved from the East Coast to LA, uh-huh. and they were like, and they were like, oh, cool. Like, I can't wait to see you. I'm like, well, <laughs> to be honest, like, I don't go to LA that much. Um, sometimes, and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, well, like, how far away is it? I'm like, well. It's like an hour flight, but it's yeah. like a fourteen hour drive. <laughs> it's far. Yeah. So. LA is not. It's not close to where you live at yeah. all in any possible so. way. All right. I've, I just put the cafe music on. Royalty free. Thank you, uh, Unwind Station on YouTube. Thanks, Unwind Station. Can you hear the music? I can when you talk. Oh. That's the only time. I don't know. I don't know how it Fox. works. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's it, rocking. It's not really. It's, it's not. It's totally fine. It's not. I don't. It doesn't really bother me. So um, um, I do want to throw this out there. We haven't really been throwing out our Discord uh, link so much. You know what I mean. But we're starting to open it up. If you want to be on the Discord, you know what I mean. We're all hanging out there. We're being. We're all being cool. That's where you can go to maybe guest on the show if you're interested. All all sorts of fun stuff. But I did put in a uh, radio bot essentially, where I can plug in a, a Spotify playlist and like shuffle them and stuff. And so I've been having getting a kick out of that uh, for the, for all of October uh, that I had the bot in there. Uh, it was playing spooky music. Right now it's playing synthwave. Nice. It's pretty cool. It's, pretty I, it's a cool feature. I didn't even know that existed in Discord. Me either. I just started. I was like, what other bots are there? Because I saw uh, Steven and them added uh, 
me me six to their discord and i was like you know there is other bots but i'm like do i want a bot like that i'm like i don't know i know i have some that do notifications and stuff but i was like dude what's a what's a jacob style bot music <laughs> you had to sense. find your specific I was like, jacob bot yeah i'm like you know what Oh, and then, by the way, I gave the DJ role to a number of people, of course, all the crew members, including yourself. You can also... Oh, that's cool. I, I can show you how to control that radio. You can move, mess around nice. with it all you want. Where does it pull Where does it pull from? Dude, we can straight up just put the URL uh, for any Spotify playlist, and it'll just put it in its queue. You can make, oh, that's awesome. You can make custom playlists even within the actual bot itself. So these bots are pretty fun. I did try this other bot that was like an RPG or something, but it was it didn't work so well. I was like, nah. <laughs> Sky, Skyrim and Discord? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Something like that, you know? Because I want to do something. There is a Pokemon bot, but I was like, ah, I'm not like the biggest Pokemon person, but I know you are, so you know what I mean? Yeah, you know. But we already, if it was a Neo, Neo Pocket bot, Mon bot then oh that yeah that bot. would be better dude it's like you want to you want to <laughs> capture fucking the pizza man bot or the pi pizza <laughs> manzard <laughs> i forget what it's called i can't fucking um, remember yeah i will eventually be building the beast Harry, <laughs> aka po neo pocky decks but you know oh, like, you got not to. yet yeah see, uh, like yeah and also sorry i'm behind a week on on those i gotta i gotta uh i gotta reach out to some more um more well, neon pocketeers and get some approvals <laughs> i like that pocketeers um yeah it's fine <laughs> this is kind of like an off week because you know like like i said before miguel just couldn't make it tonight um so you know we're just just kind of off we can take a break here and there but i felt like we could still sit here and chat about nerdy stuff and hang out with the people you know what i mean yeah heck yeah so i got a question for you then what do you uh what are you looking forward to in nerddom for the rest of the year obviously we're gonna have some end of the year you know recappy you know all the class all the classic fun stuff we want to do as a nerdy nerdy podcast but yeah game of the years and all that kind of stuff but like just right now on the horizon is there anything that's like uh mm -hmm. you're really eager to look forward to uh well number one i haven't even messed around with andor and i keep hearing Andor's good mm, so it's really good yeah yeah so that's one that's one thing it's already on the horizon i'm excited for um uh, I don't really know uh, what other shows or movies are coming out for the rest of the year. I know Avatar is coming out, which I'm like, yeah, should we go to Avatar? And I'll just say really quick, uh, I don't know. Did I talk about Black Adam on this podcast yet? I think no, I kind of did. not on this podcast. I, I feel like I did eventually. Okay, see, now, now the Nightbot's popping off. It wasn't popping off before. Nice. You need to get those timers right. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> all these bots, you know what I mean? This is all, look, this is what all I'm just trying to convey. You know what I mean? There's bots to program. There's, uh, rules to put up to, together. You know what I mean? There's things to do. Uh, there's overlays to get correct. You know what I mean? There's stream elements to configure. There's a lot of things to do with all this. You know what I mean? We, we are, we're fully integrated with our, with our tech. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of, a lot of moving and grooving. But it's a good time. You know what I mean? It's not a complaint. I'm just saying. A lot, a lot, a lot goes into all this stuff, you know? It seems kind of trivial to some people. They're like, what do you do? Just turn on a camera? No, yeah. it's not. No, it's, it's a... <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's, it's more like, than I, that. I got to say, sure. and, like, you know, there's been a, several of my friends, like, you know, my close friends up here always bug me. They're like, let's start a podcast about this thing or that thing or whatever. And I'm just yeah. like, I, you know, uh, God bless them. Like, I love all of them. But I'm just like, I know you're not going to put in right the groundwork to like actually put it together and it's just gonna end up all being me and it's like right you know like one of the reasons that this whole thing has been so cool is like you and i go back and forth and oh and yeah and delegate and delegate and are able to like play into each other's strengths and and you know all that stuff you know so oh for um, sure dude and i i really appreciate all the help you've put into the show man like there's, 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 likewise there's times when this guy just like will just type up the description for me and i don't no one's ever done that so that's awesome <laughs> i appreciate that yeah, it's, it's a team <laughs> effort and like like it's cool to yeah, yeah. it's cool to now that we're on all the channels and like we all have access to do the stuff it's like it, it makes it so easy to be like all right here we go here's your thumbnail here's whatever you know and, yeah precisely and and i enjoy doing a lot of that stuff and then you have the studio set up and have the discord all set up and like that's something that's totally not in my purview view so you know that's cool oh yeah no you know i'm the producer 
That's what I do. I'm the dungeon master. Love it. Although Mochi you Squeeze are. refuses to call me the dungeon master. You know what I mean? But <laughs> that's... that. I mean, I am a dungeon master. Every time I play sure. D&D, I've always been the dungeon master. Although, I w- yes, awesome. I would like to play. But I, I like telling stories and, 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 and you know... Whatever, but then that's why my friend uh, Kevin started calling me the Dungeon Master, who was originally on Odd Valley. Um, and I was like, that's a cool title. I'll take that. And then Mochi Squeeze like, I'm not fucking calling you that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw this, I saw this meme the other day that was like Anakin, Anakin Skywalker in bed with Padme. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, all right, next time I want you to call me Master. And she's like... She's like, we can do it again, but I do not grant you the rank of master. <laughs> and he gets all pissed. <laughs> Showed him. Like, oh. Showed him. Um, okay, so I pulled up a list of games coming out. Um, nice. Besides the ones that are already out, like Bayonetta and Modern Warfare 2, we got Harvestella. That's coming out. Oh, yeah. Any interest? Oh, yeah. So uh, during, I can't remember what it was, the Nintendo Direct, I think, right? Wasn't it I like. Think so. it- it was that day that PlayStation and um, Nintendo had the thing on the same day. Right. Yeah. So uh, what? It was it was like four farm RPG sim games, right? That were debuted yep. on, in that one direct, and everyone was shitting on it. You know what I mean? But like, I actually, hey, your boy Jacob, he likes to get high and build stuff or like run a farm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Me it's it's a good time. And like, dude, even and, and, you know, all joking aside. Um, even though I do like to get high, uh, <laughs> that's not a joke, <laughs> not a joke, but no, uh, like I, uh, for the super Nintendo, um, I had the original harvest moon. And so I've been playing since the very first one ever came out. Uh, so I've loved these types of games forever. And then when the one for PlayStation came out, which it's called back to nature, which is at the same time that harvest moon 64 came out. I fell in love. Like that's to, to to this day is one of my favorite games of all time. I feel like it's so well designed. The way that all the birthdays and seasons and everything work were it's just so great. Just such a great game. And then from there it felt like the quality started to branch off and get shitty. Uh and then until we got the one for that everyone likes. What's the one everyone likes? Uh it's on Steam and shit. Yeah, I know. I I, I, I fell off it. of them much before then, so I don't know. Oh, you mean? Oh, you mean? Um, what's the one everyone plays? Stardew Valley. Yeah, Stardew Valley. Jesus Christ, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Dar- then Stardew Valley came out, and that was like probably the best one, the best recent one. You know what I mean? Even with all these three D ones, but a lot of people swear by a lot, of, a lot of the JRPG ones. Which brings us back to what we were just talking about, Harvestella, and in the games nowadays, it's like, look, farming's in there. But is farming the whole focus? And that's kind of the thing about all four of those games. Farming is the focus for some. One's more of a legacy, right? Where it's like your family. One's straight up just like kind of a lazy farming game. And two of them are sort of like farming RPGs. But Harvestella is straight up from Square Enix. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I'm really considering maybe picking this one up. I, I, uh, I, it's... I, it's not Switch exclusive, right? It's coming to other platforms, I think. I think so. Uh, I have to look that up. But, like, let's say it comes to Xbox or, like, PC, right? Uh, I would definitely pick that up on PC. If it's only on Switch... I'm with, uh, I'm with you. I don't know. I wonder... Oh, yeah, um, it's on one Steam. Of them and I Steam, yeah. Nice. Oh, shit. I wonder if... Um, if there's any co-op i know one of them from that day it was hard to keep them all straight but one of them from that day was co-op yes dude um, the one that with the one the co-op one to me was the one that looked like the one that was like god i'm just fucking talking in circles here the multiplayer one looked like the one to got to get because of the nice. multiplayer and because the actual the, the game itself looks good it looks like it's a good game like visually it kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy Chronicles with the look yeah, of it. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? But that's Fae Farm, and that's the one I was excited for. But I'm like, but Harvestella is coming out. And Celtic Queen from, you know, his kind of funny best friend, Celtic Queen, is always talking about this game, Egg and Beyond, dude. I'm like, man, should cool. I get this? <laughs> I don't know. Well, hey, uh, I'm going to stay tuned, and I'll maybe see how reviews drop and stuff like that, and then maybe I'll yeah. jump in because I'm, I'm down, you know? Yeah. 
Oh, well, it's sixty dollars, so maybe not. <laughs> there is That's that. Kinda, there is that too. It's kind of steep. This is why I don't buy Nintendo games anymore. I'm like. Yeah, me too. I just got Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed for forty bucks, and I was like, "That's a good price for a good game." Hell yeah! And 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 it's like, when you get those types of deals, you're like, "Oh, and I look how much fun I got out of that." And so then you like compare it, and you're like, especially with Game Pass, you're like, "I better get this much fun out of this Nintendo Switch game," and I just feel <laughs> like I rarely do. <laughs> yeah, for so. real, dude. Uh, okay. Don't Ooh, forget to I teleported. To swoop. Hey, good job, good job. I teleported. Did you like that? Um, I feel like maybe yeah, I, I did. Just so, pull this list up. You know what I mean? So, I like that. I think it's a good call. Sonic Frontiers, eh? There you go. What do you think? I don't know, man. Thoughts? I don't think it's for me. I don't think it's my jam. Not your jam, dude? Not feeling it? Not my jam. So... N nope. Oh, oh, can they hear us? Okay, good. good, good. Okay. Um, not for me. If it's $60. And I know it is. <laughs> I know it is, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> But then, like, what if it's really good? I just feel like... What if it's just, really good, dude? Yeah. You know what I mean? I just feel like even the, re even the quote, unquote, really good Sonic games that people herald as, you know, as yeah. the ones, like, I still don't really like that much. Like, right. the old 2D, like, side-scroller ones, like, the, yeah, they're cool, but I just feel like unless you... Unless you nail a run, like, almost perfectly, like, I just hate the feeling of, like, getting a bunch of momentum and then just stopping and then like being like well all right i gotta start my whole momentum up again it's not like a normal platformer where it's like you kind of just get into a f or i did i never got the flow you know what G i mean so G i don't know gage are you a little ocd man a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i can tell <laughs> yeah because you know so you just gotta let those things slide you know what i mean you'll get your speed back you just gotta go yeah, <laughs> you Dude, just Sonic gotta go Mania, fast. You just gotta go fast. You can get you can get going fast again. Trust me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Just tuck it's in true. a little ball, slam a button, and you go. Are you laughing you at me? You fucking go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good yeah. times, man. I'm um, getting I'm getting laughed at from the peanut gallery back there. You go. That's perfect. Um, Sonic Frontiers could be cool. You know what I mean? I, I'm waiting to hear how good it is. I want it to my be whole thing with it, uh, people real, real quick, and then we can move on. Uh, yeah. But uh, for my thing is like you know it it for these games that are kind of copying the Breath of the Wild aesthetic, sort of. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just like Sonic. Sonic to me, the style of it is like edgy, almost like cyberpunk. Like you know, lots of neon and color and like machinery and right. like city cityscapes and stuff. And so for me, right. like the them trying to emulate the Breath of the Wild thing, I'm just like that's not what i would go to sonic for really mm -hmm. so i don't know i've seen some stuff that looks more like that right but i'm like we'll just see how it comes together this just makes me think of like sonic adventure and stuff when you're like running next to that whale or whatever the fuck and like he is in <laughs> realistic you know nature situations there and it, it works i guess i don't know i think yeah it, yeah i just feel like here's the thing right here was my primal thought when i saw the trailer for sonic frontiers i was like those puzzles look fun they're, they're trying to use, like, Sonic's run to make interesting puzzles, which I was like, okay, I, I, I could... I, I, I saw myself playing Sonic Frontiers and getting into a flow state, and that's what I like about games sometimes, spacing out and just be just get going yeah. into the flow state. Just, like, that's what I love about From Software games, right? Just going through everywhere, just, like, not stopping, killing everything, being a badass, you know what I mean? Sonic Frontiers, I feel like it would be the same. Yep. Uh, so it could be good. We'll see. Cool. Then we'll we see. got the goat. Are you there? Pause for Jin. Did I lose? Pause for Jin. Okay. So we're gonna pause for Jin, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about God of War Ragnarok. Jesus, God of War Ragnarok. If I can talk properly. Uh, this is God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> This is a highly anticipated video game right here. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. I saw a game guy Grover uh, saying, "Oh, we're all, in a week. We're all gonna be playing God of War." And I said, "Not me, buddy. Um, wish I could." And he's like, "Oh, sorry. Me neither. I forget that not everyone can play that." And I'm like, "I can't wait to hear what you have to talk about when you tell me about how good it is. It looks great. You know, I might get a PS5 eventually." But for now, me too. Eventually, I'm just gonna hear about how good this game is. 
Yeah, me too. Hey, um, am I back? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. Welcome back. I stuttered there for a second. But yeah, no, I, uh, I, yeah, one day I'll get a PS5 and, and I'll be really excited about it when I do. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be similar to last gen where I got a PS4 right at the end and then had a ton of great games to play and that'll be that. Right. I mean, that's how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Let's see a couple others. We got Pentiment. Uh, it's. It, I hope. Hopefully, I think that's going to be like a little shorter, bite-sized, fun Game Pass experience, which I'm, I'm yeah. full, fully here for. Yeah, it's just like a narrative kind of adventure game um, about history and like animated historically. Like the, I mean the the art style looks historical and interesting. Yeah, um, it so. specifically looks like this one scroll that is like this long painting. That's on cloth. That's like it's it's about like the Battle of Hastings, I think. Um, nice. It's an old yeah. So it's like emulating that type of style, like almost illuminated manuscripts type of thing. So looks cool. I don't know. Yeah. They put they put Warzone two on here, but we already said that Modern Warfare is out, and I, it's cool. Uh, I guess <laughs> November sixteenth. I don't. I don't. Whatever. Goat Simulator three though. Now that's a video game. That's a video game. Now that's a video we game. We can run around and, and cause some mayhem in there. If that game costs sixty bucks, I might consider it. I think we I think I think there's a shot that that gets announced for Game Pass at some point. Who knows? Oh but. my god, could you imagine? Um There's a new Dark Pictures, The Devil and Me. People are hyping that up. I've never played any of them. I know. So, the I only know. one that's on Game Pass is Man of Madon, which everyone touts as the worst of all of them, and so I haven't jumped in, but Yeah, same. So I don't know, but but like people seem to care. So that's cool, I guess. Uh yeah. w- what up, Keen Omega? I see you in the chat there. Po- Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now that's a video game. That's a video game. I'm you know, yeah. I'm trepidatious as always, but one of these days Pokemon is gonna put out the one. That gets me gets me fully fully roused, you know. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Woo. I mean, but this game does look like it's probably gonna be good, but I think so. Much like my opinion on these Pokemon games is it's more of the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're taking some swings. I don't know if they're gonna be for the better. Like, I'm hoping that they take like the good parts of Arceus. Yeah. And the good parts of sword and shield, and are just kind of mixing them together. Yeah. My thing is like, I just, I just want, I want Pokemon to be a little harder. And like the last mm-hmm. one I just finished, um, which was Brilliant Diamond, which is the remake of Gen Five that came out um, last year, and it was just so easy. Like I just, I yeah. literally didn't lose a single thing, like ever. Yeah. So. Uh, Keen Omega in the chat said four player co op is going to be cool, and uh, yeah, that's pretty that cool. Is cool. Because, like, what, in the Sword and Shield, there was, like, co-op, but it was only for raids or some shit, and you could maybe trade easily, but it wasn't like you're literally co-oping the whole time. My other thing is, like, with with Pokemon, it's like, they always want to add all these new gimmicks, and I'm like, just have the new gimmick be the open world. Like, don't worry about all this weird (laughs) crystal shit. (laughs) You know? Don't be showing me crystals, bro. Get your crystals yeah. the fuck out of here, all right? Yeah. Keep um, your crystal visions to yourself, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> uh, that's Stevie, Stevie Nicks right there. It's, yes, that's a goat. <laughs> uh, Gen 4 Remake was not something we needed or wanted. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's look at the official website real quick. You know what I mean? Pokemon. Ooh. Oh, I like the color violet because you guys know I like purple. I and like look the at curves. these little guys. Look at them. You I think it. I'm going to have to go for the, the grass kitty, I think. You want a grass kitty? I, I'm a fire type just in general. I'm always Me a too. fire type, always but in anything, you know? It may, he probably turns into something cool, but he's kind of a doof right now. I don't know. I don't know, dude, but I, I like the Quaxley motherfucker, though. He's hilarious. He looks like Elvis or something. He's a weird, weird little, weird little guy. Little quacky boy. All right. Uh, What else we got? We got Dark Tide. That looks good. Remember Dark Tide? 
Oh, oh yeah, the Warhammer game. Yeah. That, that could be cool. I think that we can jump into co-op. Maybe that's a yes. and that's coming to Game Pass, right? I think so. I uh, don't know about that, but Isn't it, it is. Is it? It's it. Is it not Xbox published? No. Oh no. 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 Oh, it was just at the Xbox showcase. Yeah. That's oh yeah. Yeah. Because it'll be on Got Xbox. It. I mean, I don't think it's Game Pass, but Dark Tide um, is Vermintide, the like 40k but sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, honestly, I, I, I could see myself getting a dark, a dark tide if we had a four man. You know what I mean? So yep. you get dark tide. Kino Mega gets dark tide. Anyone else gets dark tide? Pan- I bet Panafin. Maybe. Panafin yeah, yeah, I bet you Panafin would want to get dark tide. So for cool. sure. Um, and you heard all those names. Follow all, all those fuckers on Twitch. <laughs> then we got Marvel's. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm sorry. All Marvel's right. Midnight Suns, which I'm excited for. No one else seems to. Be. I am too. I uh, it, there's been like a mixed reception. Like at first, everyone was all hyped. Then people saw some gameplay and were kind of confused. Mm-hmm. I feel like because it's for access, everyone just wants it to be. Um, why am I forgetting uh, the name of their usual games? Oh my god, it's the one with the aliens and the guns and stuff. Yeah, why can't I remember? It just I, I just completely remember. left my mind. So It'll com. get back. XCOM. To XCOM. So, XCOM. I there said SOCOM, but XCOM. I meant XCOM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a pre-order uh, for it. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, um, For sure, I'll be getting this. It's just a question of when. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm um, in. December 2nd, though. You know? Callista Protocol, oh. same day. Okay, well. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, probably favor Cal- I'll probably favor Callisto. <laughs> we might have to get a Callisto Protocol instead. Um, and yep. then get that later, and then followed by High on Life, which is the Justin Can't Roiland, wait. Um, Justin Roiland's uh, video game production company, is making that. And then Squanch. We got Squanch Games. Thank you very much. Uh, December thirteenth, and that's on Game Pass, so we'll all be playing that. I'll be reviewing that, um, I think, for Neon Pocket Dimension. Yes, you will. I'm so down. I'm 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 also definitely playing that. I I listened to. Uh, Ryan McCaffrey's un, uh, unfiltered IGN unfiltered interview with Justin Roiland about that game. It was really good. And uh, I already knew I was going to play it, but it cemented it even further for me. So, yeah. That's awesome. Then we get Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion on Xbox Series X, as well as every other platform, including the Nintendo Switch. Wow. that's That title is... Us- wow. Just give us seven remake on Xbox, please. <laughs> for sure, but... Dude, I will be picking this up 100%. Cool. I just don't know if for PC or for Xbox. Definitely not on the Switch was wrong with people. Yeah, um, what are people doing? Yep, and then there's some other games here that were announced with no official date, although we just got the Atomic Heart date, which is 2023 February. Uh, I don't remember the <laughs> which... actual date. Uh, no more, no more games need to be in February, really. But, you know. <laughs> Every fucking game. A couple other I'll things. Ask you, though. I'll ask you something real fast. Real, when are, when can we start? We, you and I need to figure out how to get in touch with, um, game studios PR people and see if we can start getting some codes. <laughs> oh <laughs> so yeah, send us codes, games. dude. I'll play your game, dude. I'll review it. Yeah. Well, we'll, I'll well, tell well look, about it. before we even start with that shit, we should start just doing reviews and stuff. You know what I mean? That's true. You know, you you've you've already kind of started projects like that, which is great. You know what I mean? And I've been more focusing on my own Jesus streams and stuff. But I think which is, cool. uh, which is also great. You know, I'm loving that shit. Uh singer bro, I see you. What's up? Um What's up? But for sure, like I've thought about doing reviews for things. Um, you know, giving it giving a crack at it. Um I mean, I'd love to do either little like micro video essays like really quick ones you know i wouldn't want to spend too much time editing but that could be fun but i also like writing so there's something about maybe just but you know who reads shit anymore but (laughs) but i'll I'll read what you write bro just just write it yeah no i'd like uh we can put it up on our web page and we can you know tweet links to it and stuff like that i guess and yeah um and then we can talk about (laughs) the review on our podcast you know so precisely yeah um so it's not something that i'm gonna do like for everything but i feel like what we should try doing is just you know both of us do one kind of project like that 
Uh, we can come together on the edits on both. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, but yeah, I would love to. I would love to review High on Life. So I think you should. That's the one um, I'm going to shoot for. I'll play through the whole thing. I'll give an honest to God review. I'll take notes. I'll do the whole thing. Why not? Hell yeah, um, I love it. And just, I, I think that's yeah. a pretty good uh, good one to sink your teeth in because I don't think it's going to be too too long. It sounds like it's like a kind of classic like 10 to 15 hour first person shooter campaign kind of vibe yeah for so. sure but i think it'd also be fun to go back and review old stuff uh a la, uh what's his name the wall action button i don't know if you've ever heard of action button oh, yeah. aka tim uh fuck what's his name tim something god dang it i forget i know it. the videos he's yeah. from uh he's from kotaku it's like tim Oh my god, I can't remember his name right now. But Action Button, look them up on YouTube. They're great. But he's gone yeah, back and done some reviews from for some old games. And he did this like really intense review for Cyberpunk 2077 that was in, in, really cool. And you know, I I just like that kind of shit. So, I don't know. I can I could see myself going back and reviewing uh, one of my favorite video games of all time. Uh Dark Forces well, 2 be... Jedi Knight. Uh nice. Hell yeah. I love that game. Talk about why um, I love that game. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm also a big fan of Jedi Academy, the oh the, um, the Jedi Knight sequel. Yep. Um, did you ever really play? Good. Did you ever play Dark Forces One? That's um, I want to say like at a friend's house, and I think that's what made me like cued me up to buy Dark Forces Two when it came out because I bought I played it on PC. Oh, so you did get you played Dark Forces Two Jedi Knight? Yeah. Oh, very nice. A cultured person. Very very nice. Yeah, uh, that was like that was the the time in my life when I played PC games. Like that was oh, all, yeah. that was all I really did. That was all I really did for in gaming wise at that time was I was playing Counter Strike and yeah. Warcraft Two Battlenet. Oh and man. And then, yeah, Dark Forces and Jedi Knight and Jedi Academy. And even <sighs> games like um, I used to play Star uh, uh, X-Wing and... Um, TIE Fighter? Yeah. I, I, had, I, I, had I, TIE never, Fighter. I never actually played TIE Fighter, but I played X-Wing, which is pretty much the same game. But yeah. Opposite. Uh, I didn't ever play X-Wing, but I had TIE Fighter and I played the shit out of it. And it was awesome. Nice. <laughs> it's really fun. Hell yeah. But and then, you know what game I just remembered recently? Because uh, I watched a Noclip documentary on it. And it had completely, like, I had completely forgotten about it. But black and white, uh, oh, the lion's yeah. head, dude, the I lion's still, head game. Dude, I still have my CD-ROM somewhere. I found them recently. That um, might be valuable because they, they, it's not on. The licensing is so complex between EA and Microsoft and and like defunct Lions Head. Wow. That um, that like they don't make. It's like you can't play that game anywhere. Well, I definitely have my box for the movies, which is also Lionhead. Do you remember that game? You ever play the movies? Yeah, the movies. You remember wow. that shit, dude? Totally. What? Well, uh, so it's really funny. I was ta- um, I don't know who I was talking to. Oh, dude, X Interact. These boys. You know, I got fucking Singer Bro in the chat right now, saying what's boys. up. Boys. Uh, Eric, aka Arcwing of X Interact, was like, at, we were talking about my age for whatever reason he's like wait how old are you and i said i'm turning 36 next month well actually that i well we talked in october that's this month i'll be 36 years old fuck i'm getting old (laughs) and he's all like damn dude i thought you were like you know 29 28 or something (laughs) i'm like well yeah i appreciate that but I'm I'm pre- I'm old. I'm old in video game years when you think about it, man. Because like I keep thinking about these super old games, and I keep talking to all these young gamers, you know, not realizing how young they are. And I'm like, man, I bet you, I bet you barely remember an arcade. The, uh, <laughs> the problem with me is that like not, not to even be condescending, I'm... you know what I mean? Just saying. Oh no, please condescend those little fuckers. <laughs> um... <laughs> Damn. Uh... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but um, the uh, the problem with me is that I'm I mean I'm only well I guess I'm four years younger than you. Um, oh wow! But uh, well, like three and a half. Uh, but um, close, close, yeah. But the problem is that I didn't. I was I was like really restricted from games for like the first 
12 years of my 10 to 10 to 12 years of my life so because of that like i'm a little behind on even what games i should know you know what i mean so, yeah yeah um yeah, man i was ga- I, like i would go to my uh dad's house <clears throat> dad's house and stuff um like back in the day like on the weekends or you know every once in a while whatever and yeah my dad always had like the computer you know what i mean and so like he did have some games but mostly i was into the games and he had the computer i didn't have a good computer at my house so when i'd stay at my dad's house i'd be playing hella hella computer games and that shit was tight nice. that's what really got me into it and then i eventually got a computer and was able to start playing like some computer games you know at my house as well other than just yeah. like king's quest and shit but man yeah. yeah no i loved all those old ass games that you described uh Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness was my first Warcraft. Uh, and the, the original Command & Conquer was my first Command & Conquer. If you guys even remember nice. what the fuck that is. I mean... And then I was watching. a big uh, big <laughs> Battlefield 1942 guy also. Oh my Love god, dude. I remember when 1942 first came out. And this was the first Battlefield game. If you guys know the series mm-hmm. now. Uh, Battlefield 1942 first came out. And the I didn't even know about it. And I went with a group of friends to a land party or a land center because, yeah, they're, I don't know if they, they even really exist. They they were called Internet Cafes and then Land Centers, which were, Land Centers are more for, like, games and stuff. So it's just a whole bunch. You pay, like, per hour. Um, yep. And it's just a bunch of PCs in a room that are, like, connected on a, ne- you know, a network. Local. Just, just local. Local area network. That's what LAN stands for. Thank you, sir. And then all the games have a bunch of games on them, or all the computers have a bunch of games on them. And they had 1942 on these. And we were like, what is this? We were watching people play. And so we were just like jumping in, you know? And like anyone in there could just join the server everyone's playing on in this in the in the land center. And it was the first time I'd ever experienced a game like that. And it was so incredible, dude. Oh my god, 1942 is so cool. <laughs> being like being out in the like in the battle wake island and like you could be out on the big um destroyers and like just pointing huge ass guns like towards the beach and just like shelling people and then like after you die that round then you'd be on like a in like a jeep up on the beach like getting out or like getting in the back and shooting people it was so fun oh dude i loved it so much yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah. I put a bunch of sad faces in the chat thinking they were happy faces. So I'm just putting that out there. They're supposed to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and then uh, yeah, the yeah. other the other game that I'm, I'm hoping old. to uh, ju- jump back into is uh, Persona 5 just came to Game Pass. So I think I'm going to get back in there. Oh, yeah. You need to do it. Um, I haven't fired it up yet, but, yet because I've played... I'm in Chapter 12 of Yakuza Like a Dragon nice um just playing been playing it off and on and so like now because persona 5 hit game pass i'm like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna finish like a dragon um but then i've been playing it on the uh, cloud gaming at my house because i have an xbox controller clip with my uh phone here and so like all the grindy stuff i'm doing i'm just doing it on my phone while i just kind of lays about on the couch i think i'm gonna do that for persona 5 also that's why i'm like like you know, I I can do the the dungeons or any grindy stuff um, on the phone. Like as I'm going to bed, just do a little bit of that, you know, and then mm-hmm. and actually play the days, you know. Because the only thing is like, it's a lot of like reading for the little little ass phone screen, you know. But we'll see. Yeah, no. It's, or if it, yeah, it's or intense. if I should let me borrow the iPad, I can use that. There's that too. Oh yeah, you can put it on the iPad, which yeah. is cool. Apple. Apple yeah. is allowing Game Pass now, right? Because they weren't. Before. Yeah, I mean, you just go, you via do it via the bra- browser, oh. um, which honestly works pretty easy. Well, fuck you, Apple. <laughs> yeah, I'm and sorry, uh, you know the me. the Bluetooth the controller connects uh, just via Bluetooth, so it's super easy there. And oh, that's you know, cool. Whatever. Yeah, they could just play it. You know, use an Xbox controller. Totally. Yeah, man, it's crazy living in the future. That's all I'm really getting at, and we're getting older. Pretty. That's pretty good. You know, I remember when games are like, beep, boop, 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 and you just like tap one of two giant red buttons and it's just a little <laughs> joystick or something. And that was it. And it costs a quarter. You know what I mean? 
and you can only play it down the street at an arcade. You know what I mean? Or or going to a cousin's house who had the Sega Genesis to play Sonic and stuff. There you go. Um, stuff like that. And now it's like, well, yeah, I just fucking put on the haptic suit, put on the VR helmet that costs more than the PS5, and then you can get your dick sucked. <laughs> uh, I have my Oculus. Uh, I've got my Quest charging right here. I uh, Ooh. I had the I had the hanker in to play some Beat Saber this weekend, so I'm gonna boot that up maybe. If I had if I had a quest, I'd be probably exercising regularly, like, way more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just play a beat saber. You're swinging your arms. You know, you're dancing Great. to some dance you music. Duck, you do a little, do a little like pivoting and stuff. Um, fun fact: Aishu is like the goat at beat saber. She Ooh. she holds all the records in our house. Like, I think I have, I think I have the record on like literally one song, and like she just kills me. Right, Aishu. You're, yeah, I've charged it. She is the yeah. beat. She is the beat saber. She is the beat saber, is what we're saying. <laughs> um, she's old, she just just gave me the deuces. <laughs> deuces. Um, there you go. Yeah, she, for whatever reason, like she literally beats all of our friends. Like it's it's crazy. I don't know why. It's just she. She beats sabers she, them, dude. She beats sabers all of our friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. She uh, she beats off all of our friends. <laughs> She she shows him I'm the master of the beats, Saber. That's what You're she shows You're the master him. of the beats. She really yeah. I don't know something about it. I think it's like I've tried to watch and see like what she's doing, and I think she just like I don't know. She doesn't she doesn't move around too much. She's Skills. just really like right in the flow. Skills, dude. I don't know. No wasted Skills. movement. She uses all yeah. her key correctly. Um, it's similar. It's similar to like me with Guitar Hero back in the day, where like I feel like I'm trying to be too like dancey and rhythmic with it. You know what I mean? And then, and then I get distracted. <laughs> I'm I'm doing karate moves. If you guys couldn't hear uh, see it, they were impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Beat Saber. Um, Beat Saber. Fun yeah. Game. Oculus Quest. The uh, you know is, is doing me fine. I don't think I need a. PSVR 2 anytime soon, especially since I don't have a PlayStation 5. Cool. So, uh, well, we got 10 minutes left here. Yeah. What are, what are some fun things we're going to do with this show in the future? Um, I'll tell you about the holiday idea I had. Okay, let's go. Uh, um, and then pe people are in the chat can, can get a sneak preview. Okay. So I, I was thinking about it, and I don't know what movies yet, but I was thinking... Um, I did this really fun D and D. Well, not not D and D actually. It was Star Wars: Edge of the Empire, um, which is a Star edging, Wars D and D like edging the Emperor. What? Edging, edging the Emperor. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and I'm our sorry. our our Galaxy Master, which is what they're called in that game. Um, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> G, G, uh huh. G Galaxy GM, Master. not got DM. It. Yeah, Galaxy yeah. Master. Got it. Uh. He did this really cool thing where on Christmas we took a break from our usual campaign and the idea was that we all sat in the local cantina and we had to tell of like a story from our past um, to like get to know our characters. Cool. But the story had to the story had to be a Star Wars version of um, of a Christmas movie. Right? <laughs> and, okay. And he get and he gave us all our Christmas movies in secret, and then th the other characters had to had to guess what it was, you know. Um, okay. And so I was thinking about I was thinking about doing something similar for us, but with like uh, with some other like property for each person. So like each person will get like a different like universe or multiverse since we're a, a, di a pocket dimension. And then a different Christmas or holiday movie, and uh, and yeah, and we'll all, but there'll be ones that like we would have all seen and know, obviously. Okay. And, uh, and we'll have to cool. like kind of do a, a little a little breakdown, something along those lines. It could be a segment or it could be a whole episode. We'll see. But that sounds like fun. That'd be really yeah. interesting, right there. <laughs> like so, so we'll what? See. Like. Uh... Uh, Predator universe, but you gotta do Jingle all the way. Exactly. And so Something it's like that. the Predator is like the mailman, 
you know what's his name um sinbad yeah sinbad, sinbad. is the predator basically <laughs> but you just do yeah. that same movie Pretty you much, already got you just, Arnold Schwarzenegger just... in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, maybe it's uh, Get maybe the it's like Sp- Spon- yeah, maybe it's like SpongeBob and um, uh-huh. you know, the Year Without Santa Claus or something like that. You know, we'll we'll see. I I don't know what the Year Without Santa Claus is, man. Oh, you haven't watched that movie? It's like one of the little puppet like Rudolph style movies. Um, no, I've seen Fr- I've seen Frosty. I've seen sure. Rudolph. I've seen Elf. I've seen. Yeah, I think we'll probably keep uh, it to live action, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. seen Claws. Have you ever seen Claws on Netflix? That's good. I've I've seen Claws. That's a good one. And uh, you know, um, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Yeah, we'll pick. <laughs> we'll pick. We'll pick from ones that we all know. <laughs> Man, why are you covered in mud? Um, that's great. Now the best moment in Jingle All the Way is when he has like the bomb. He's like, "This is a bomb. It's gonna go off," and then actually does blow up. And he's like, "Damn, that was a bomb. People are sick. These people make me sick." And that's pretty funny. <laughs> Asic, that's pre- pretty Asic good. Sinbad. Sinbad is really funny. Also, Sin- Sinbad was on Eric Andre. Have you ever seen Eric Andre show before? Yeah, yeah it's wild stuff. Uh, that's I like that kind of stuff. So that should explain a little bit about me. And if you guys know me, I'm all about chaos. I like chaos. Sinbad and but, Sinbad and Rob Thomas are in an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, I love that show too. Yeah. Um but the Sinbad episode of Eric Andre is they have this wheel of misfortune or something and it keeps spinning and they're like, Let's see where it lands and it just never stops. And it's like almost <laughs> stops and it keeps going. And then uh and then <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, fucking uh, singer bro in the chat is talking about my TikTok, uh, and those are some fun streams. So you should you should be there for those. Nice. But anyway, he stops it, and then it says move to Russia, and so it's just in bad saying like I'll just move to Russia. I'll just move to Russia, and you just keep saying it over and over again. I'll link nice. to it in the description. I'm sorry. I love it. Have um, you ever seen what Sinbad else? as a we- condom? I have not. No. What else are we going to do with this podcast for the rest of the year? We have a... Uh, what would we got? We got uh, possibly a Pokemon episode next week. We got an unplanned yep. episode the week after. We got a birthday spectacular episode that uh, last nope, week. that way. Because it will be my, the, my birthday week. So we're just going to do fun stuff. And we're going to talk about things I'm really nerding out on. You know, something like that. Like know, we'll figure something out. Um, and then in December, I think, you know, we'll do a Christmas type episode for sure, obviously. And that's when we'll, we'll do that segment. But we don't really have a lot planned there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we do. It's called the fucking Game Awards, baby. Because the Game Awards yeah, are coming we, in December. We got Game Awards predictions. That'll always be gotta fun. We got to do and, the uh... fucking Game Awards, the predictions. We got to do year end review, which we have planned for January 4th. Technically, that's next year, yep. but um you know what's uh, you know what's cool about the the fact that we're i think our maybe one of our last episodes will be the game awards predictions or maybe reactions um yeah uh but our first episode was uh opening night live wasn't it uh oh yeah no uh, um it was actually an xbox event oh that was our first episode yeah you're right the game the opening night live was like three or four in yeah um Mm -hmm pretty cool though, like finishing starting and finishing the year off with uh with reactions slash predictions to to stuff i mean we like to do to games that. games news we definitely like to do that you know what i mean we, we should definitely do that for like stuff like dc fandom and whatnot but you know a lot of times with the live reacts the x interact boys are doing it so i just like tag along with their stuff so we could probably partner up with them with some future stuff and and, and see what we can do for some live streams and stuff Typically all that stuff just, you know, it's like during work hours, so it's not great for us. Exactly. The Game Awards, however, will pro- will likely not be. They're usually in prime time, which is cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we can do either a React that's alongside them or, um, or whatever. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, stuff like that. But for us, yeah, for the rest of the year, what I, what I had on the docket besides, you know, one-off fun episodes 
is just like I said, game awards. Uh, we may discuss it on two episodes, our predictions and then our reactions. Uh, for sure, a uh, end of year game uh, review of the whole year. We're gonna rank things. We're gonna talk about things we loved in the year, the things that came out. And you know, again, if you know Neon Pocket Dimension, we're not just video games. We do love video games, so obviously we'll talk about that. But I mean, we're we're gonna rank like what albums? You know what I mean? Movies. Right? You know. TV shows. Our favorite song of the year, right? Yeah, TV shows, movies, like you said. Um, we can even like say what uh what streaming service uh killed it, you know? Yep. Who had the best yep. content of the year? Um stuff like that. We can think of like funny categories for like best this, best that. Like best I new like restaurant, a- you know, that you dis- you you discovered in your your uh, city or whatever or something like that. I love that. You know what I mean? We um, just want to re- we just want to do like a year in review episode. It could be a little bit, bit of a long one. Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit of a saga, but I think um, I think it's cool that we do it that way because, you know, realistically, we're not reviewing every game or we don't have a big enough, like, team slash crew of people who are going to, like, you know what I mean? Like, we can't really do a game of the year, like, for Neon Pocket Dimension because there's just no way, like... I mean, you play a lot of games, I play a lot of games. It's impossible but, for know. me to pick those things, but, again, it's Elden Ring, so... I mean, this year's pretty easy, but I mean, but like instead we can just all talk about our own personal favorites, and I feel like that's right, a cool yeah. way to like, you know, um, I feel like to kind of cr- chronicle those. Yeah, I feel like for us, it's not so much like Neon Pocket Dimension says that. Excuse me, says that God of War is a five out of five. It's like no Neon Pocket Dimension isn't gonna give you like one overall review. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like we're all going to have our own review of stuff. And like, typically we're not going to overlap there at all. Yeah. And then, you know, looking back at the year and just saying like our favorites of things or our top, (sighs) top something is, is cool. And, and uh, just as fun to like categorize all those things. And then we can post them all, you know, in YouTube descriptions and on Twitter and stuff like that, you know, whatever. You know what? I also, uh, every year I look forward to the Spotify year and review stuff. Uh, so yeah, like, that'll be really fun. <laughs> we could definitely uh, share those on the podcast as well. So should be it should be a good time. And then I'm also looking forward to the uh, the you know review draft thing everyone does for the game for video games or whatever, which you know everybody's oh, always yeah. doing um, those. Singer bro, pizza man, and all that. Can we all be in one big league this coming year? Let's do it. Let we'll see. We'll see about right. that. We'll see about that. That's up to them if they want to. You know, being, but I don't want to be in multiple leagues. That's all. That's my stipulation. So we're all in one big one or not. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it would just be fun if we, if we have some competition against, you know, like all oh, the yeah. X Interact guys, maybe some other kind of funny best friends that we, that we invite yeah, who, and stuff like that. Who want to be in on it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm looking forward to that stuff. And then just generally for the show itself, like, I'm looking forward to trying new segments. You know what I mean? Like trying weird episodes. I'd like us to do really off the wall stuff. You know what I mean? Where we just show up as completely different people and like pretend like it's a whole other podcast for a certain episode just for one, like a one off, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. (laughs) Doing a do like recording an episode, like in a different location, You know what I mean? Doing like an April Fool's that's really weird. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, And then maybe in February for the uh, Valentine's or something. I want to do a... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think I froze. No, I can hear you. I think I I was delayed. Are you there? Am I back? You're back. Okay. Okay. Uh, No, no, no. I'm here. Um. I uh, I want to do one for uh, maybe you were getting to it, but for maybe for Valentine's there, whatever, doing our significant others podcast for sure. Yeah, I think we should do that in uh, February. I think that'd be a good time. Cool. And then we should in February because a hundred games are coming out. We should do a game apocalypse episode where we just like all talk about like as much of all these games that came out that we we've actually played. You know what I mean? Or maybe we yep. can even do like a 24-hour stream or something to like, you know what I mean, really test ourselves. 
<laughs> and at just try to play at least, like at least twelve hour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Try to play one hour of each game that came out that month or something. Like I think we can come up with a funny meme thing to do uh, with with that concept because Jesus Christ, there's so many games coming out February 2023. Seriously, and so, uh, you know. eventually next year, eventually next year, you know, I'm, I am having a having a child, but um, at some point next year, I definitely want to come to Vegas and actually do a live podcast with you guys. We'll make that happen. Dude, we got to do it. Got to do it. You got to um, come down. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll have a good time. I can't I, I can't yeah, wait for that. Agreed. Yeah, maybe um maybe we'll plan it around like some show at the Brooklyn Bowl. Yeah, and oh Aishu yeah. And I can come out and and kick it and That's a know. great idea. Yeah. Either that or we'll leave the baby here for the first time with with someone <laughs> with mom or something. <laughs> and we can just go and get our because we'll just go for a weekend, you know, like we can do a long weekend. Um, yeah, Aisha says either Aisha says you and Miguel can watch the baby. <laughs> there you go. And the, yeah. the girls can have a girls night and it'll just be it'll be go. it'll be three men and a, ba- and a baby up in here. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, you know, I look forward to all that content. And then uh, I just want to reiterate, like Neon Pocket Dimension, it's, you know, it's a good time. We're going to keep going 20 episodes down, you know fucking hundred to go million to go however many uh i'm having a good time with it oh yeah i just wanted to man it's i just want to reiterate that this is a place all about creativity you know what i mean like any kind of weird episodes we'll do like yeah we have our rhythm and we'll do our thing but you know just expect weird shit to happen on this podcast because that's at the end of the day that's what i always push for and i know that Cage is over here generating all sorts of fun stuff for us to do and try on the show. So that's what it's all about, man. Getting weird. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's gonna get weird, and we, we're in a we're in a weird altered dimension when we step into this podcast. So yeah. anything could happen, you know. Oh yeah. Oh man, I can't wait for the gray alien episode where we all wear gray alien gray alien masks and just uh, <laughs> talk about probing for an hour and a half. That oh, sounds like go. a. It sounds like it's gonna go real. It's gonna go like that. That'll be. We have endless content for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know. Yeah. We're gonna do weird shit, and you know I hope you're here for it because we're here for it. And uh, yeah. What? Oh, he he froze. Shout out to all of our like you know our friends. I froze. Am I back? You're nope. back. Yep, you're back. Okay. Cool. Um. Shout out to all of our friends and like the little, you know, the the community that we kind of are a subgenre of a bigger community, but it's like it's cool to to get to know people. I was making some shirt designs for the X to Interact guys over the weekend. Um, oh yeah, you know, it's just fun. It's fun to it's fun to like build this slowly but surely and like uh, meet new people and have guests on. I'm I'm excited to have a lot more guests. Like I think the ones that we've already had on have all been really cool and yeah. you know so. For sure, yeah, and uh, you know if you're ever interested in being on this show or or Odd Valley, if you're into drinking, because that's what that show's about, definitely reach out. You know what I mean? Hit us up. You got Neon Pocket Dimension at gmail.com. You got Odd Valley Podcast at gmail.com, respectively. You could always reach out and, and ask to to be a guest on the show for whatever reason. But if you're gonna be on this show, remember, show up, be as nerdy as possible for whatever it is you're nerdy about. And that's why we want you on your show, you know? Like, look, between me, Miguel, and Gage over here, like, we're all into video games. We're all into all this stuff, video, you know, movies and shows and anime and stuff. But, like, I know everybody's nerdy. Like, people just like books, you know what I mean? Someone could show up on this and talk about books the whole time, and we'd love that. So, yeah, that that is a big goal for me in 2023 is get more guests and, and whatnot, but... We have a good time here, you know. Even if it's just me and Cage, obviously we can have a good time. And you could, hell drink, yeah, you could drink Actually, some vodka. <laughs> that's gin. That's gin. Uh, oh. Yeah, you know, like yeah, you and I, uh, you and I can always, we can always make a podcast out of whatever. Like that one time, it was you and me for an episode, and we're like, oh, we'll probably like go a little short, and then it was like a two and a half hour podcast. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, we could probably talk endlessly, you know, but uh, that's true. Hey, this isn't. We're not gonna do endorsements, even though. Hey, I do. <laughs> what? What's something good I had recently? 
Oh, full bars. Baby Ruth. Dude, I had a Baby Ruth in my house, and I ate the whole thing. It was so good. I, I would ind endorse that. And Fat Tire. I like that. And uh, here, here, here's some Gunner, Gunner blue light glasses. Pretty good. Oh, nice. Solid. Cool. Uh... Jewel gin, local local gin made in my in my hometown of Humboldt County up here. Fuck yeah. Get it. Yeah. And then I had this. There's our, there's our pseudo endorsements. Yeah, there's some endorsement. Some non endorsements, I guess. Yeah. You know, fat tire, that's a good beer. Um and then, you know Neff Neff Beanies. Super good beanies. Oh, Neff Beanies. Nice. Any any F F, yeah. Uh I don't know what else. I don't know. I think that's it. That was that was a good little just chatting, you know. Yeah, it was a great time, man. Um, there's something sort of a I sort of a relaxed say. a relaxed fit of sorts, you know what I'm saying? Oh yes, oh yes, good time. Yeah, we were definitely relaxed tonight. You know what I mean? Um, how's that gin? Is it delicious? It's honestly, I so earlier when you were like celebrating and you wanted to take a sip of something, I was like, all right, I'll take a sip out of it out of the bottle. And I tasted it and I was like, God, this is delicious. I'm just going to drink it straight. And so I've just been drinking it straight. Wow. And it's honestly really like just room temperature, straight gin. That's incredible. I'm surprised. I'm surprising myself. It's really good. Dude, you know what? I guess that is my tip for you guys tonight. Sometimes just drinking liquor on its own is actually pretty good. You should try it, especially if it's like scotch, whiskey, bourbon. Mm -hmm. I guess gin tequila. too. Tequila for sure, man. I have this tequila De behind tequila, me. Tequila, you know? pretty good woodford yeah. reserve i got i got a bottle of that behind me i love that stuff you know? but always drink responsibly uh and then oh ooh, let me let me put this out there real quick vampire survivors is coming to game pass on consoles I saw that. it's coming to fucking consoles dude so like please as soon as that comes to console if you have a game pass download it on your console and i know that includes you gauge and i cannot wait for you it's such a good time I'm so excited um, and that really, I feel like that's kind of like my indie game of the year. There's so many good games this year. It's so hard to pick, but man, Vampire Survivors is the one I probably put the most time into. But nice. Hey, we'll talk about that again, January 4th. Uh, Gage, give us a Love little it. hymn to, to lead us out. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me read what Mochi Squeeze said. It was fun. I was watching while I was packing, so couldn't really comment, but I was responding out loud. <laughs> So there you go. That's that's what Mochi Squeeze is doing while we were hanging Thanks out. Thanks to the ether. Uh, so go ahead and give us a little hymn. Give us a little lead out. We'll get the hell out of here, man. All right. We'll say, um, one fine day when my work is over, I will fly away home. There we go. That's all we got. <laughs> Yay. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>